All right, Meep. If we can pee on a volcano, then can we poop on a vent? So, whether it's a good idea or not, that's what we're gonna try to find out today. So over here I have a natural gas geyser. This thing gives out natural gas at 150 degrees Celsius. Super hot. But we have found out here that the outhouses actually have set output temperatures for their polluted dirt at 37 degrees Celsius. So that's a fair bit cooler. So therefore, can we, by just using the outhouses and the wash basins and possibly even the compost piles, create an area up here that's cold enough to protect a gold amalgam pump from the heat of a natural gas geyser? It only has to be less than 125 degrees Celsius. And hopefully in such a way that it doesn't cook our dupes. So you can see here the temperatures are ooh, pretty hot. And this is probably gonna heat up over time, but how hot is it going to get? And if it works for a natural gas geyser, can it work for a hydrogen vent? And if it does, we might be able to pass this thing off as actually being somewhat useful. So I think one thing I want to do here is actually expand this to the right and then put the compost pile. Oh, where do I want to put it? Probably right here. All right, let me make a new blueprint here. Mm -hmm. Two on vent. Boom. Ha. All right, so the only thing left here is just to kind of see how long it takes for things to blow up. Temperature-wise, things are gonna get hot over here with the hydrogen. The natural gas might be all right. Let's see. So I'm going to need some more dupes. Welcome to the base, meeps! Whee! <laughs> oh no, you're, you're on the wrong side. No, not. No, meep! Meep! Meep, you only have one job, and that's the poop. All right, so just to run you through the automation, this one down here is just looking to be above 1,000, and if we detect the gas right up here, then it's going to run, and we should see, yes, there we go, natural gas. Now, naturally, you would filter this because you might end up with a little bit of polluted oxygen and whatnot, um, and I have that set up to a sensor. If it's above 300 grams, then I'm going to pump it out. That way we keep this filtered. Maybe that pump needs to be located somewhere else, but for right now, that's what I have this. Same sort of thing, hydrogen over here, 1,000 down here. Yeah, above 1,000. There you go. Now, as far as the material, when it drops out, it's actually just going to drop onto this tile down here below. And I'm hoping that that will conduct enough heat to where I don't really have to do anything too fancy here in order to keep this cool. If I do have to do something a little bit more fancy, then I may have to drop it into maybe some liquid to transfer it around, like oil. Because um, I don't really want to ship it around on rails, because that gets away from this low-tech solution. You know, like we're doing here. This is definitely not low-tech. <laughs> Although we are using outhouses and, and compost piles. I guess the only thing left here is to let this thing run for a while and see how it works. And then slowly graph every single cycle. Alright, so I'm going to set up a thermal sensor. And right there, and then I'll set my mouse over here, and that'll kind of give me two spots to measure. There we go. So that one's 99 degrees Celsius. This one over here, ah, 53 degrees. A little bit cooler. <laughs> All my dupes are getting cooked every single time they go to the bathroom. <laughs> Clearly, I need to rework the thing on the right here. Cooking your dupes constantly is not really going to work out. So they need to have Atmos suits just to use the outhouse. Why not? Seems practical. All right, there you go, dupes. Yeah, see, now you're not getting cooked up. Hmm, interesting. So over here on the left, it, it looks as if the temperature might be stabilizing at right around 60 degrees Celsius. I mean, that's hot, but it's not enough to hurt my dupes. This might actually be working. The temperature on the right continues to go up every now and then, so don't think we've matched the hydrogen vent just yet. All right, so I just observed the duplicates clear out the outhouses over here, and I can see the temperature is dropping, just as I would expect. That's actually pretty awesome. I think this is actually working out really good. Ha! How about that? Oh, once again, I'm spending my weekend looking at poop and writing down numbers. All right, so yes, this is what I'm seeing now. The hydrogen vent is now dormant, and therefore the temperature over here on the right just continues to drop. Nice. And then that thing's not going to be active. Ooh, for another 28 cycles. Hmm, this area is now full of steam. Let's see, did it always do that or was that new? Okay, so there's a little bit of steam in there on just the previous cycle. 
What if I go back one more? Holy moly, I can hear my whole house rumbling. We got Mondo Storm rolling through here. Constantly, just shaking. All right, I had to shut it down for a little bit, but now I'm back. I'm really curious to see how steam developed over here. Like, a, a fair amount of it developed. I'm wondering if it's coming off the wash basin when they go to empty it or something like that. Don't know. So you can see here, this contains water at 163 degrees Celsius. That ought to clean the germs off. What do we got over here? Same sort of deal? Eh, it's working just fine. There it is, there it is. What happened? Meep, what'd you do? <laughs> Eventually this thing just blew up. Meep, you know you did something. Okay, here, he's going to go use it. 4.5, nothing. All right, Meep, all right, Meep. I know your pain. We've been here for 65 cycles. Now let's take a look at some results. Oh, no, you're hiding. No, come back, Meep. Ooh, look at this graph. All right, so I data logged this thing for 65 cycles. I really wanted to show you what happened when a geyser ran for its full run and then kind of went dormant here. And what you can see here is red is hydrogen. Started off relatively cold and then increased in temperature, got hotter and hotter and hotter and then maxed out right around 220 degrees Celsius. Which you know what? Is pretty good because the maximum temperature that our pump can be is 275 degrees Celsius. And if we take a look at the natural gas, this one really kind of stayed steady, but slowly increased in temperature over time, maxing out at a top of 67 degrees Celsius before it too went dormant and started to cool off. And that one has a little bit more headroom at 125 degrees Celsius. However, once we get above, I think 72, or is it 75, somewhere in there, your duplicates start to get damaged from the environment. So while the dupes got hot, they did not get damaged from going into this environment. It actually worked out all right. And there's enough poop on the ground that they can just breathe their own stink. Pretty cool. However, while these results seem quite awesome, I could still be talking out of my butt. So let me go ahead and run back and we're going to disable all of the bathrooms here and see what happens when we run the same system, but without all of the outhouses and compost pile operating inside of here. Cycle 605. Well, crap, I can't go back in time far enough. I didn't plan ahead. All right, plan B. I'm just gonna continue to let this run, but we're gonna see just how, how hot this gets over here. Here's what I'll do. I'll record it, I'll point the mouse at it, and we'll see at what point do things break. Ooh, and it's overheating. Broken, broken, broken. All right, so now I'm gonna let this thing run through the same cycles again, and we'll see if it breaks at the same cycle or if it continues to go past it. We'll be back in an hour. All right, so here we are in cycle 696. And last time, this thing was overheating and failing, but this time we're at 216 degrees Celsius. So yes, absolutely, by putting some compost piles in here and some outhouses, you can actually tame down a vent. Now, would you do it with a hydrogen vent? I don't know for sure. I'd probably try to do a little bit more than what I have going on here, but it does seem to work, especially in the case of the natural gas geyser. And considering this is a pretty low-tech solution to taming something like that, I might actually use it. It's definitely an unconventional way of cooling down a geyser, but hey, it works. So that's pretty cool. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar out.